to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ jesus said come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i'm meek and lowly of heart and you'll find rest for your souls. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30. We welcome you today to our study of reward for service. What reward does the Christian receive for his service to Almighty God? Stay tuned as we let the Bible give us the answer to this great subject. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. Being a Christian requires diligent work service and effort on my part and yours. Jesus said in John 9 verse 4, I must work the works of Him who sent us while it is day, for night comes when no man works. Being a Christian is a life of work and a life of service. I've got to strive every day to walk worthy of the Lord. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 10. I've got to make sure that my labor of love and my service for the Lord is really what God wants it to be. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 3. And we must strive to make sure that we're working diligently in the kingdom of God. Listen to the words of James chapter 1, verse number 25, as James speaks about our work and our service in the cause of God. The scripture records, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Our work indeed is essential in the kingdom of God and the service that we provide to the Lord and His church is of such great importance. But friend, I want us to realize today that work, that effort, that labor in that toil has a great blessing to be received. There is a reward for our service to Almighty God. As we emphasize, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. This is the promise. God promises His children eternal life. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 25. And you know, as I think about this rest, this reward that we're going to receive, the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 4 verse 9, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. He's able to save to the uttermost 
those who come to God through Him. Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 25. And our Lord spoke of that beautiful reward and rest and elaborated in such beautiful terms when He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. That beautiful place called heaven where there are multitudes of dwellings for the people of God. There's more than uh, room for all of God's people. It's a place we want to go. It's a place we long forward to and long for and look forward to as Christians. But, you know, as we think about reward for service, along these same lines, each Christian must realize there is not going to be a reward without some kind of service. And where there is faithful service, you can have an assurance of a grand reward. If I'm not willing to work in the kingdom of God and I'm not faithful to the Lord, that reward cannot be found. But if the Lord finds me working on that day and faithful, what a wonderful day that'll be. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10 clearly teaches us that our works will be presented to the Lord on that judgment day. And the beautiful words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58 remind us each of the need to be busy. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Do you remember John's encouragement to suffering Christians? The Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let's think today about that reward for our service and, and how it all relates so beautifully together. Let's begin by asking, what service? When we say service, what service? must be offered unto the Lord. What work or what service is a part of the Christian life? And friend, naturally, our service to God is that we must be willing to sacrifice self and give of our time and our effort and our ability to the kingdom of Christ. Paul said in Romans 12 verse 2 that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That, that transformation and that living our life acceptably to God is all a part of what Christianity is about. Think about 1 Corinthians 6. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit whom we have from God. We're not our own. Therefore, listen now, we're to glorify God in our body and our spirit, which are His. My body and my spirit, they belong to God anyway. I need to do my best to serve Him acceptably. Notice the, these words of Jesus in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. What does it really mean to be a Christian? Daily denial of self and a willingness to take up that cross and follow Christ every day. Be faithful unto death, Jesus would say in Revelation 2, verse number 10. And friend, this is not done out of forced nature. This is not done because God is forcing us to. We do this willingly because we love God and what He's done for our salvation. The writer Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, The love of Christ compels us. Why? Because we judge thus. If one died for all, all died. And He died for all that they who live no longer live for themselves, but live for Him who died for them and rose again. In my service to God, I want to do my best every day. The Christian wants to do his best every day to give God first place in his life. But then, friend, as we think about our service to God, Another service we must offer is that we must, as Christians, diligently give ourselves to the study of God's Word. Job said in Job 23 and verse 12, I have treasured the words of His mouth more than my necessary food, more than those three square meals a day that we often think of. The Word of God is more important than that. Jesus said in Matthew 4 verse 4, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And in Matthew 5, in the Beatitudes, we, we hear that beautiful statement, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness in serving God and really giving myself to Him. Friend, I need to be a, a, a good student of the Word of God. I need to read my Bible. I need to study it. And I need to do my best every day to live according to its teaching. This is why Paul would say to the young evangelist Timothy and to Christians today, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. I want to search the Scriptures Acts chapter 17, verse 11, daily. I want to study to give an answer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. And I want to do my best to really let God's Word have the answer to the most important questions of life. In Jeremiah 37, verse, verse 17, An evil king asked, Is there any word from the Lord? And friend, that ought to be the question of every person who's striving to serve God. And to answer that, let's look to God's Word. For the Bible is God's voice today. God has spoken. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. But as we think about our service to God, let's also realize that to serve God as He wants me to, we must faithfully follow the teachings of Christ in the New Testament. You see, I'm not living under the Old Testament. Now, don't get me wrong. The things that were written before time, Paul would say, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might find hope, Romans 15, 4. And so the, the Old Testament is inspired of God. It was written to the Jewish nation, to the Israelites, and there are great lessons about life and about God and His nature that I can learn there. But I'm not going to be judged, nor am I living under the Old Covenant. Jesus crucified the Old Covenant. He put the Old Covenant to death on the cross. Colossians 2.14 and Ephesians 2 verse 14 says, In fact, Christ said in John 12.48, He who rejects me does not receive my words. He has that which judges him. The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. And so to, to really serve God and to really have that reward for service, I've got to faithfully follow the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you notice this verse with me? I want you to notice Matthew chapter 7. As Jesus speaks about putting Him first and His teaching first, He makes this great statement about the need to faithfully follow His words. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus says this, Not everyone, Jesus says, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It's not enough just to look up to heaven and say, Lord, Lord, and then do what you want. You've got to follow the teaching. I've got to follow the teaching of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25 says, We, we cannot be forgetful hearers, but we've got to be doers of the word and the work of Almighty God. And so let's faithfully do our best to faithfully follow the teachings of Christ as we serve Him. But you know, part of the wonderful service we offer to God is we've got to strive to be soul winners. Soul winners for Jesus. You know, we often sing about that. We think about evangelism and reaching someone with the gospel, but that's part of this great service. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse number 10, that of Christ, the Son of Man, has come to seek and to save that which is lost. No one emphasized the need to save the lost more than Jesus did. Jesus gave us that great parable in Luke chapter 15 where there's a, a shepherd who has a hundred sheep in his fold and, and there's 99 sheep who are home safely and one has wandered away. And the shepherd goes after that one sheep facing danger, facing the elements, no matter what it takes to bring that one sheep back into the fold. Friend, when we think about that, we think about how diligently Jesus worked 
to save the lost, even going to the cross to die for mankind. What about our service? Part of our service is we want to tell others about that great message. Do you remember Proverbs 11 verse 30? He who wins souls is wise. That's true soul winning in the biblical aspect. We're to go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature through my life, through my example, by the way Christians live, we want to let them see the light of Christ shining in us. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16. And then as Paul said in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 28, Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect, in Christ Jesus. Are we really offering the kind of service that God wants us to offer to Him? You know, as it relates to our country, I think we understand in the United States of America, especially in generations before us maybe, that service was necessary to live in a great land like this. In fact, the motto that was often proclaimed was, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Friend, isn't that a wonderful idea to think about the church? You know, too many times we sit around thinking, what can the church do for me? Or what good is that church over there? What have they done for me lately? It's the wrong question. We ought to be asking, what am I doing for the Lord? What am I doing for His church? How am I faithfully serving the cause of Christ? And friend, if we are doing that, let's notice the reward that will be given to God's people. There are several avenues by which we can see the wonderful reward that Christians will receive, but let me illustrate this as well. As part of our reward, let's realize there is a physical benefit. There is a earthly benefit to serving and following Jesus right now. I'm not saying you're going to be rich. We're not talking about a health and wealth gospel where you're going to be healthy and wealthy and everything like that's going to go just perfect. That's not the idea we're talking about. But Jesus did say, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Right now, I'm living. And you're, if you're a child of God, part of the reward we receive is we're living the best life you could ever live. I've been given all things through the scriptures, through the sacrifice of Jesus. We have everything we need for life and godliness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, we approve all things, we hold fast that which is good, and we shun that which is evil. Think about all the things that by following Christ, I, all the ills that I've avoided, all the sin that I've avoided, all the hurt and the ungodliness I've avoided. Living the Christian life is the best life right now. Jesus said, I'm the way the truth and the life. And friend, living for Christ right now is the best way you could ever live. And so that might be a small part of the reward in the here and now. But the grander idea, one of the rewards we receive is the joy and the peace that we know we have as a child of God. Philippians 4 verse 4, Paul would say, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Friend, we don't want you to take this the wrong way, but please understand, if a person is a child of God, part of the reward of being a Christian is the joy and the peace and the happiness that one has in Christ. Uh, Luke 2.15, when Jesus came into the world, the angels proclaimed peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Jesus gives us the ability to rejoice and to be happy in the situations we face. Is anyone happy? The writer James would say, let him sing songs. James chapter 5, verse number 13. As Paul and Silas are, are in prison in Philippi, in a deep, dark, dank prison where you think they might throw in the towel and give up, the Bible says, no, they were praying, they were singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. The Bible teaches us, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy set before Him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. You know, even 
in the first century, in the midst of suffering, trials, and persecution, the Bible says, after they were beaten. Acts chapter 5, verses 41 and 42, they counted it a joy to suffer for the name of Jesus, and daily in the temple and from house to house, they ceased not preaching and teaching Jesus as the Christ. This is why James said, we can rejoice in our trials, knowing that the trials we face have a far greater working ahead of them. And so I have that hope of heaven. I have the best life right now, and I have joy and peace beyond measure. But friend, let's realize this as well. Part of our reward for service means that even in death, I can have victory and triumph. Death is not going to win over the child of God. The Bible says in Revelation 14 verse 13, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. Their works do follow them. What life can take death and look at it as a blessing and a good thing? Only the life that offers reward for service. The Christian life. This is why the writer would say in Psalm 116 verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. How does heaven view when one of God's children leaves this life? Precious. John 5, verse 28 and 29, Jesus so beautifully proclaimed, All are in the graves will one day come forth. Those who have done good, that's reward for service, those who have done good to the resurrection of life. One day, we will meet Him in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13, And one day we can hear those words, Well done, good and faithful servant. But friend, as we think about really the epitome of that joy that we have for serving God, that reward for service, let's realize that is seen so graphically in the images that we find in Scripture of heaven. Do you believe in heaven? Do you believe there's a place called heaven? Jesus said the righteous will go away into eternal life. Are you looking forward to eternal life? That place Jesus described in Revelation 21 verses 3 and 4, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain. All the former things have passed away. Sin, darkness, Satan, ungodliness won't exist. That beautiful place called heaven. God's there. Our Father who art in heaven, Matthew 6 verse 9. Jesus is there. I go to prepare a place for you, John 14, 1. Saints of old are around the throne of God, worshiping God there, Revelation 4 and 5. And friend, that's where Christians long and desire to go, to that beautiful place called heaven. We sing the beautiful song, How beautiful heaven must be. Aren't you looking forward to living in that place called heaven? If so, then friend, we want to emphasize this final principle. How do I make sure, and how do you make sure that we don't lose our reward for service? Let's first realize I can, if I'm not careful, I can lose that reward. I want you to notice a passage in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 4, as Paul speaks to certain Christians who are starting again to trust in the old law. The apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 4, these words. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Part of making sure that I don't lose my reward means I recognize it's possible to lose it. Some who were Christians had been cut off from Christ, they fell from grace. This is why Paul would say, take heed, stand, lest you fall. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, I've got to fight the fight every day. I've got to make sure that I don't let Satan into my life. I've got to make sure that I don't let sin overtake me because I realize I can lose my salvation, lose my reward if I'm not careful. Secondly, don't get the retirement mentality. You know, you work a job for a certain amount of time and you say, well, we might want to let the young people come in and do this. We've been working at this long enough. It's time we let somebody else take over and do this. Friend, I realize that as one ages, he may not be able to do as much as he can. But listen carefully. In the Lord's church, there is no retirement system. 
You don't reach 65, 70, 75, or 80 and say, I've done enough, I'm going to let somebody else do it for a while. I think I'll sit back and take it easy now. It's not the way it works. We remain faithful how long? Until death. Revelation 2 verse 10. That's what Jesus emphasized. This is why we've got to keep working, keep fighting, keep doing what we can for the Lord. And again, while, when age comes, you can't do as much. But that doesn't mean you can't do something for the cause of Christ. And then this, as I strive to stay faithful to the Lord, part of what keeps us motivated is we've got to remember what we're doing for God is not vain. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. The service we provide to God and to the church, it's not vain. In fact, it's the most wonderful thing you could ever imagine. We have that hope of eternal joy. Job asked a question in Job 14, 14. If a man dies, Job said, will he live again? You know, the answer is really not given to that in clarity until Jesus comes on the scene. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, Jesus said, he'll live again. If a man dies, he will live again, but only can he live again in Christ. Eternal life is only offered in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, friend, we ask you, are you giving God the true service He deserves? Are you making sure in this life, am I making sure in this life that I'm really working, that I'm staying busy, that I'm putting God first, that I'm giving God first place in my mind and in my life? And if I'm not, I need to make corrections to that. For Jesus made that wonderful promise that all could come and find rest in Him, but only in Him. Are you in Christ? Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Galatians 3.27 says, As many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Take hold of that great promise Jesus made. Come to Him to find rest and make sure in this life that each one of us are giving God the true service He deserves every day of our life. May God help each of us to do just that. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.